As you know, Newton's first law of motion is an object at rest will stay at rest and an object in motion stays in motion with the same speed and same direction unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. When it comes to softball, an example of this law is when you catch the ball. After you throw the ball, the ball will continue to travel until the other person catches it. The glove is acting as the unbalanced force. Newton's second law of motion is force equals mass times acceleration. An example of this is when the pitcher pitches the ball. The amount of force applied to the ball depends on the mass of the ball and the acceleration of the motion to pitch the ball. Newton's third law of motion is for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. For this law, there is one prime example. When the pitcher pitches the ball, the ball is moving nonstop until it hits your bat. When your bat hits the ball, the ball bounces back. This is the main action-reaction situation in softball. In softball, work is used when you hit the ball. Changing your bat speed is changing your power because the faster you hit the ball, the harder you hit it. Potential and kinetic energy are two types of energy. The energy stored in an object based on its position is called potential energy. The amount of energy an object has based on its motion is called kinetic energy. When a pitcher is about to pitch or a player is getting ready to throw the ball, the softball will have its maximum amount of potential energy. As the softball is pitched, the speed increases. The potential energy will keep decreasing while the kinetic energy increases. This kinetic energy converts back into potential energy when the softball hits its peak, then turns back into kinetic energy as it falls or until the ball is caught. Newton's first law of motion states that an object at rest will stay at rest and that an object in motion will stay in motion unless an unbalanced force acts upon it. When the goalie stops the ball from going into the net, they are the unbalanced force acting upon the soccer ball. The ball misses the goal, so no unbalanced force acted upon it and the ball stayed in motion. Newton's second law of motion states that force equals mass times acceleration. When you kick the ball in soccer, you are using force. If the ball does not have a lot of mass, it doesn't require much force to accelerate. If the ball does have a lot of mass, it will require more force to accelerate. This law is important because you need to know how much force to use depending on how fast you want the ball to accelerate. Newton's third law states that for every action, there is an equal opposite reaction. The ball hits the post, so it bounces back. This is because when the ball hits the, cr the post, there has to be an opposite reaction, and the opposite reaction in this case is the ball bouncing back. When you kick a soccer ball, your leg puts kinetic energy into the ball. When you kick the ball, it deforms. The part of the ball where your foot touches becomes flat for 0.1 seconds. The energy outcome is kinetic energy and a small amount of heat. Work is being performed in soccer whenever someone kicks the ball using force. When the ball moves in the same direction that was kicked, you did work.